Welcome to another skate culture. This week, I wanna start off by talking about trans world going out of business. But it does get me thinking about what's next. What's next for Thrasher? Thrasher, I think, is the only really prominent skateboard magazine that still exists. I know there's a lot, but Thrasher is by far the best-selling magazine. But I do think that the end of the physical subscription for Thrasher will probably come to a close soon. Which doesn't really matter because Thrasher does well with doing the ads on their website, with doing YouTube videos, with selling merch, especially with selling merch. So they're making good money doing what they do, and they have a staple footing in skateboarding right now, but I don't think that the actual physical magazine is something that brings them a lot of money. Next, I wanted to talk about something pretty random, but it's this new online video magazine called iDabble. Sierra Fellers and someone who I haven't met, Jordan Maxam, run this thing together, and the idea is basically bringing back the idea of what 411 VM is. It was this epic video magazine that a lot of skateboarders loved, and even at the end of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, those videos that you saw at the end, Hey, shut up though. They all said 411 at the bottom. So basically they were getting a ton of publicity. They were getting a lot of love. Everyone backed them and they were also getting super mainstream attention from a game like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. But they eventually went out of business because the concept of a video magazine just doesn't make sense in this, this economy. Everyone has access to the best skateboarding, innovative skateboarding every single day. Hundreds of clips posted from different people. The Barracks, Thrasher. I mean, there are YouTubers that also put out good content as well or make compilations of really, really good content that's out there. The reason I find this interesting is because a lot of people in California have actually been in support. They've shown videos of basically every single pro you can possibly think of, every single person involved in skateboarding, especially in the California region, being involved with this project or at least holding up a sticker and saying, Hi, I dabble. It's cool that there is a project being worked on by skaters. But the controversy comes in in an interview with Sierra Fellers on Jenka Magazine where he basically said that this project would be free. That if anyone wants it, not free, but insanely cheap, much cheaper than anything that anyone's ever paid for a skate video. And then yesterday, I dabble actually put up their first DVD online for a pre-order and it was $30. So I had to know. I commented, is the streaming version at least free? And they replied, very close to it. Now, the two real ways that you can validate charging for skateboarding is if one, you believe that most people should pay for good skate content. Almost all the skate content out there is free nowadays, but maybe you're someone who thinks, maybe Sierra Fellers and Jordan Maxham and people behind the company think that it should be paid for. You're putting in a lot of time, work, and effort into these videos, people should pay for it. Or you think that your content is either more unique, better in some way or another than all of the free content that everybody has access to every single day. And there are a few reasons why people are having issues with this. One, charging $30 for a DVD does seem outrageous, especially when you think about Blessed, the Supreme video where Bill Strobeck has proved time and time again that he can create an innovative, amazing video he only charged $20 for the DVD. And I think on iTunes it was only $12. So to charge more for a project where there really isn't a basis yet on how good the production is going to be or how unique it's going to be, you kind of only know that Sierra Fellers and Jordan Maxham are amazing at skateboarding. They have amazingly talented friends and maybe that's enough. But you can go on Instagram and go to Metro Skateboarding. You can watch Skate Crunch. You can watch Thrasher. You can watch The Barracks every single day and see unbelievably amazing, talented skateboarding with super high production value. I would like to know your opinion down below. What do you think of that? Do you think that anyone should charge for skateboarding nowadays, especially because there's so much free content out there? Do you think that matters? Um... Penis. A lot of these things that I'm talking about right now, I've actually posted on Planet Melee, so I usually just go through the week of what I posted on that, where I'm posting about the most recent culture, and I talk about it on this channel. And one thing that I thought was funny was I posted something of Alec Beck, who was just introduced as a new pro to Birdhouse, and to be completely honest, I pride myself into thinking that I'm someone who's pretty embraced in what's going on in skateboarding, but I don't know who that is. And as I was setting up my camera, Guess who put out a new video part? So I thought it'd be fun to end this video with actually me watching this for the first time and reacting to what I think about this new pro, who he is, what's going on. Let's peep game. Oh my gosh. Okay, I feel like he's a transition skateboarder. That's what I'm getting so far from my if. He's at Stoner Skate Park though, which is a street skate park. Am I wrong already? He's going up, chopping that little front blunt on a flat ledge with a manual up, a. Hey. Oh, that's cool. Very 
Very rando. Skater. What the hell was that? That was awesome. <laughs> okay. Damn. Seems like he skates a little bit of everything, which is cool. Wow. He got the pads on, about to drop in on that motherfucking half pot. Hey, whoa, okay, so he's definitely a vert skater. Holy mother. Okay, this is dope. Wow. What? That was amazing. I mean, I don't know how hard that would be. And maybe vert skaters are like, uh, you're just one of those people that don't really know. But, oh, that was cool, the way that he tweaked out of that. <laughs> Oh. oh, skating a flat ledge with a VX camera stretched out or some craziness. That looks wild. Manual. That was kind of cool. I don't know. That was weird, but it's kind of cool. What you got? What you got? I've done that. Whoa. That was cool. I mean, he stalled on it for like 15 minutes, dude. Get the fudge out of here. No, I'm just kidding. I don't care. Uh, yo. That's T Hawk! Damn, dude. Imagine holding a backsmith on a vert ramp. Like, how that would feel. I feel like it's probably similar to having a child for the first time. Uh, no. Damn, the back over crook? I like that. Okay, so him and Tony Hawk are clearly close. Whoa! I feel like that's one that I have a lot of friends who would want to figure that out. Switch, flip, backside. Fakey, inward, no fakey, heel. What the fudge was that? It's cool that he skates street as well. He actually reminds me a lot of my friend Jared Lee, who is this amazing skateboarder who skates street and vert as well, uh, a transition from North Carolina. He looks like one of those dudes. I bet you they know each other. Oh my god. W okay, that was so crazy impressive. What the f Uh, Ali, yo, what you gonna do with well, then I'll try? Shut up, dude, I'm annoying as fudge. You can tell he's scared. Oh, wait, he has so much anxiety right now. What is he? Oh, oh don't even. Don't! Seriously, don't. You're not allowed, you gotta get out of the spot. I'm sorry, security's pulling up. I'll call the cops right now, literally. Go, you little pans face. All right, you get one try, then you guys gotta get out of here, okay? All right, pack it up. Yeah, that was real cool, man. Yeah, I used to skate, actually, a lot back in the day. Cool. That was cool. I assume that him and Tony Hawk probably known each other for a while. He definitely had a unique bag of tricks. He brought something different. And at this day and age, it's kind of cool that someone who isn't in the mainstream attention of skateboarding at all became pro for a company like Birdhouse, who is Tony Hawk's company. I think that's really cool. It's funny though, you don't even see him hanging out with any of the other guys. Like there was not a single clip of the other Birdhouse team members on those videos, except for Tony Hawk. So I bet that's kind of cool to be like, sitting in my hometown skating, wherever he's from, just hanging out and now I'm pro. Cool. Do I have to go on tour or anything? I don't have to hang out with those dudes? Sick. Anyway, stay tuned every Tuesday for another one of these videos. Current skate culture. I'm trying to get everything I can and with having the Planet Melee account, it's really cool that people are messaging me. All the new updates and gossip that's happening in skateboarding, I think it's really fun. But if you also don't follow the account, we're uploading fun content pretty much eight times a week. And all of the skate content that I'm posting are pretty much just friends of mine, people that I've been in conversation with over the years, who happen to be the best skateboarders on the planet. Literally, the most innovative, best skateboarders at least that I know of in America so if you are in a different location hit me up shoot me a DM and be like yo check out my scene been really excited to dabble into other people's scenes figure out what's going on uh, besides that on the account I post basically these topics as we go along throughout the week and I like to post archival footage that my brain just remembers from back in the day like hilarious Rob Deerdick footy Sheckler when he was a kid all this hilarious stuff so if you don't follow the account 100% recommend check it out it's just entertaining content going your way and I only charge
charge $30 for you to check out the content. That's pretty much it. That's not true at all, but stay tuned, uh, check it out, and also tune in tomorrow for another video because I'm doing these every single weekday. A new video on my channel. Love you so much, progress daily, and keep killing it.